So when we finished last the other Sunday, but we are is a Sunday. The wall was indeed built. Sunday, the wall is the area. It was finished. Charlie, Charlie, Marie. I had hung the doors. The gate, when the gatekeepers, the singers, the Levites had been appointed. I think you all remember that the walls that they were building were not like the walls that we see outside here in Kampala. The walls were really thick. They were almost like small houses. So I want you to notice the order of things. They they the wall, they completed it. They appointed the people who are to guard the wall and who are to take responsibility. And over this big, this, this, um, this small army of people, he put the most faithful man he could find. And he gave them instructions. Do you remember Ezra? Do you remember who Ezra was? So when the children of, or when the Jews were returning from exile, I told you they came in three groups. The first one came with Zerubbabel. The second one came with Ezra the scribe. Scribes were people that understood the law. Thoroughly. So Ezra brought the second group of people and he came back to Jerusalem. And between Zerubbabel and Ezra, they actually built the temple and they built the altar. And they, they started to use the temple and the altar. So by the time Nehemiah comes, to build the wall, the, the temple and the altar are up and are in use. But it actually takes the walls being complete, being completely guarded, for them to now gather everyone and invite Ezra the scribe to come and read the word in front of all the people. We will come to the importance of this in a minute. But let's see what happens when they begin to read the word. I put Nehemiah 13 and go to one, and three, one to three. So when it says on that day they read the book, it, it probably means that they've been reading the book periodically. It's not the first time they've read the book. It's so, right. So he reads the book in the hearing of the people. Then he reads the book and then he goes to the people. And it was found written in, uh, that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever come into the assembly of God. So, so, he's, so they read the book. And they discover that they are not supposed to let these non-Jews come into the assembly of God. Because actually when the children of Israel were coming, these, these two tribes had not met them with, with joy. They, no, they actually met them and they were hostile to them. Yes, exactly. So they, in the book was written that they should not allow these now, people to come into the assembly. It was when they heard the law that they separated all the mixed multitude from Israel. So they didn't just read the, the book. They didn't just hear. They actually did what the book said. I think some of you begin to remember the, the, the verse in the New Testament found in Be not hearers of the word only, but do us as well. Yes, yes. So, so, let's, so, so let's see something else that is really fascinating. 
about Nehemiah and this war, beginning with verse 15 of that same chapter, in that same chapter, yes, so you know that you are not supposed to Yes, he says, you're not supposed to do these things on the Sabbath. But, so they were bringing them from outside <laughs> into the city <laughs> on the Sabbath. Let's see what happens. So there were these men of Tyre. These were tra traders that were bringing <laughs> things in. So these were not Jews, but they <laughs> were traders that were coming to trade <laughs> with the <laughs> Jews in the city. And so he says, I contended with the nobles of Judah and said to them, what evil thing is this that you <laughs> do? By which <laughs> you profane the Sabbath day. And he reminds them, did not <laughs> our fathers do these very evil things? <laughs> and did they suffer as a result? <laughs> and so it was at the gates of Jerusalem, as it began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates to be shut and charged that must, they might not be open till after the Sabbath. So he uses the gates <laughs> and the wall <laughs> to keep out people and things that they do not want so now the, the merchants and the sellers they decided, okay, we won't come in but we'll just wait outside the wall we, we'll just wait here and as soon as the gates open we'll sneak in and he says then i warned them why do you spend the night around the wall? If you do so again, I will lay my hands on you. <laughs> and he said, from that time, they came no more on the Sabbath. So Nehemiah was not taking the protection of the city lightly. He was guarding the city he was not the It was a big priority for Nehemiah. He had left his good job in Prussia to come and and he was ensuring that the world's purpose was being served. So of course by now you're wondering, why are we still talking about this wall that was in ancient times? But you know, in scriptures are here for a purpose. If you think about it, we said, we, we talked about this last time, we said what is the purpose of the temple. What did the temple serve for the Jews in Nehemiah? This is sort of the map of the wall and the city. And if your eyesight is good, you will see that sort of close to the top of this map, there's a smaller square that's called the temple uh, that's where the, the Temple Mount is, the well, hill on well, which the well, Temple well, is. Well, so this is not just, this this Temple Mount still exists and there's still a building there well, to be well, in well, Jerusalem. Well, now, this this temple well, we said served a very important uh, purpose in well, the life well, of well, the Jews. Well, 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 so for the Jews, the temple represented God's presence amongst them. In fact, as far as they were concerned, when they needed to talk to God, they came to the temple. And the, and the priests met with God sacrifice to God there. So the, the relationship between the Jews and their God was very gana, closely tied to the temple. One could say that this is where their God works. And yet without the war, Nehemiah said, 
our people are in great distress and they are reproached. So today we do not go to a building to look for God. There is no physical altar on which we, we now sacrifice God's son. But where is our God? Where is our God? Our God is in us. We have a very different relationship to God than this But if, if they thought, and if indeed it was true that their God was be found in the temple. And that this is how seriously they guarded that temple. Let's think about how we guard. Do you want me to say it? Let's look at Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 4. It says, My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my saints. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. So it says, keep your heart with all Diligence. So out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart with all diligence. And above all else, guard your heart. For it is a wellspring of life. You know that we are not just, all of it is not just this. This body that you see walking around. Absolutely. There is the spirit. There is his soul. And then we have Willie's body here. But it says that out of the heart, and a lot of times when the Bible, when it's translated the heart, it actually means both soul and spirit. Sometimes it just it means soul. soul. But it says, above all else that we do, we should guard our hearts. Because it is the wellspring of life. Exactly. It's where the real life is. So we just saw how Nehemiah guarded the wall because there was a temple in there. He didn't take it lightly. He put the best men on the wall. He gave them instructions. He supervised them. And he was in the Old Testament. It was a building. But we have God in us. So, when we say we should guard our hearts, how diligently are we guarding our hearts if, <inaudible> it truly, if it is truly the wellspring of our lives? So, we know that the soul has our mind. Our soul has our mind. This is where our thoughts are. This is where our decision making takes place. This is where our fears are. This is where our emotions and feelings are. This is the place that will determine whether we listen to the word or we do Whether we do what the word says or we don't. So you can see why the scripture is saying that God did it with all diligence. So, 
so th this is this is something that that proverb says let's 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 look at a couple more engero verses look at proverbs 27 and we look at verse 19 so it says that as water reflects a face so a man's heart reflects the man in, yeah so if if you so obviously they didn't have the kind of mirrors that we have everywhere and so for them the commonest thing was when you look in the water you actually see your face and it says if you want to know the real man the real man is the heart of that man right amen the real man is the heart of that oh, man. Let's look at another verse and then we'll, we'll, so let's look at Proverbs 3. So it says that the Lord by skillful and godly wisdom has founded the earth, the understanding, he has established heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up, the skies distilled the dew. And he says, my son, let them not escape from your sight. God's wisdom, God's knowledge, let them not escape from your sight. And he says, and they will be life to your inner self and a gracious ornament for your neck. So he says, my son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. It will be life to your soul. So God's wisdom, God's knowledge, the word of God will be life to your soul. Now we're talking about guarding our hearts. And I know we all guard something. In fact, in Kampala, we guard a lot of things. So if you see a lady walking on the street with a bag, Florence, bring your bag. Florence, in the talk on so you stand over there and you're going to cross and this is Owino. This is Owino market. You've just received your salary and you have it in that bag. You show us how you're going to <laughs> If you're Florence's friend <laughs> and Florence hasn't seen you and you Florence start to check stuff, you. And, and you, you say and Florence is going to jump and run you know? <laughs> because she's, she's guarding guarding <laughs> thank you very much so we guard things we guard you know, if she loses her bag, her phone will go, her, her money. But she'll work for more. But we guard things with a lot of diligence. <laughs> reminds me. We, we get people to miss the service so that they can guard cars. You know, pieces of metal that one day will be the used for But you know, we guard them. There's some people sleeping outside, but we keep our cars in a garage. You know, so, so people have a wall. I don't know how, how high is the average wall in Kampala, but it's nice. And they put sekanyoria on top of the wall. And they have a fist in that sekanyoria. <laughs> <laughs> sekanyoria. They have they have cameras. Cameras. And inside they have dogs. Vicious, vicious dogs are waiting. <laughs> they have an alarm system on the house. They have cameras. Baina camera. And this alarm system is linked to some company that will come with guns if something happens. Alarm system bueno, eina company je 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 tegeza ne jana na buli chimwe chetagi so ba mundu. So so we can say that they are well guarded. Tuji tunzo gaman tiba bakumi wa bulu. We have a lot of security. Abantu baina security. What are they protecting? Rachi bakuma. They are protecting things. No, they are protecting the body. But maybe they have not asked, so who is the real me? Because when you guard the house with the clothes that will one day rot, 
No mobile you could just go under. Maybe the car or the motor car. You might find that the heart is just placed there. Oinzo kwe sango mutima gogo na gogo guade eriyevi. From work you come and sit and watch trash all evening. O kuva kumali moto la oluta na retole la kutivenga o la bebi tevi tagas. When we talk about walls, we talk about kuvi senge. We need to think about what are the walls that we use to guard our life. To guard the soul that is the wellspring of our lives. Nga yeruzi o msebu kovula kovula mwate. We saw that Nehemiah and Ezra, once they finished the war and they had it well guarded, they called everyone, men, women, anybody that could understand. They read the book of the law. Now what do we have? We have the word of God. Hallelujah. We have the word of God. That is going to guard our church. As I said, the temple was already in existence. The altar was in place. You might be saved. You will have Christ in you. If you do not guard your heart, there will be a problem. This is not. I do. This is not something that is two ways about. It is absolutely critical that we guard our hearts with all diligence and above all else. Guard our hearts. And we've realized that the first thing they did was read the word. But what else did they do once they read the word? They did the word. Friends, do we do the word? So, so I'll tell you something. When you read Nehemiah, I read you the example of what they did when they read the word. The word told them, this foreigner should not be among you. And they separated themselves from the foreigner. But let me tell you something else. They actually were told, you should not marry foreign women and you should not give your sons to be married to them you should not give your daughter don't have marital relations with foreign people. by the time nehemiah comes not not just ordinary people but some priests had foreign women as their wives nehemiah and ezra said this is unacceptable what do you think happened afterwards it sounds very extreme, but they separated with those women. So for them, guarding their hearts, guarding the faith, and keeping the law was non-negotiable. They were not negotiating with it. If the word said that, that's what they did. You know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit says this is harmful to your soul, they're not asking you to leave your spouse. Sometimes it's just saying, maybe read the Bible instead of the WhatsApp jokes. And we find it very difficult. You're not being asked to abandon your family. These people were asked to separate And they thought their relationship to God was important enough for them to obey such a difficult thing. So when, so when we think about guarding our hearts, it is not a casual thing. As we saw, it's the wellspring. Let's, let's, let's see a few other verses that will talk about what we can do. Right. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, verses 14 to 16. Sometimes we miss 
How often the writers of the New Testament quote the Old Testament? Ebi sere mimi tu sowa engeri awa wandi ka enda gani ka jeba quoting ame enda gani kade. Meaning that the text in the Old Testament Chitegeza, evyo, evyo did not lose their value. Asula, mwen, mwen and we can get a lot of revelation. So let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians. So the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness. How can he know them because they are spiritually discerned? But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? And then that verse ends with this powerful bit that says, But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? We have the mind of Christ. So this is powerful. Because we have the Spirit of God in us. This is what happens when we become new creations. We become new creatures because we have received a new spirit. But it says we have the mind of Christ. So if, if we are able to function in this reality of the mind of Christ, then there is not anything that Christ expected us to do that we are not able to do. But let's see what else we need to do to be able to do what we are called to do. But let's see what else we need to do to be able to do what we are called to do. To Romans 12, we shall look at verse 2. So, so Paul was telling this woman, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that Good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. What Paul is saying here by us renewing our minds, is that Paul is saying here by us renewing our minds, is the exact same thing that Nehemiah was doing, renewing the minds of his people by reading the word. We renew our minds by reading and doing. Yes, yes. So when we think about our relationship with God, and we bless God that we are new creations, we have the Spirit of God in us, and that, and that we are blessed to have the mind of Christ. Let's realize that it is the word of God that we take into our mind, into our thoughts, we meditate on it, and we renew our mind. And if we are able to continuously renew our mind, we, we are going to be able to work in the mind of Christ. Because he is the word. Amen. 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 So if we think about the things that we and and I want everyone to think about what, how we spend our time. The kind of things that we do. And whether they help us to renew our mind or not. Because it doesn't uh Pastor Godwin last Sunday, no, I think it was when Wine Rukunji, he talks about people that put the Bible under their pillow and they somehow think the word of God is going to somehow buy Rukunjiwa. <laughs> This is not how it happens, friends. <laughs> we read the word, or so we hear the word read to us. We allow it to come into our mind. We turn it over in our minds. We think about it. We meditate on it. It changes us. This is the world, this is the wellspring of our life. So let's look at Galatians 5. Uh, let's look at verses 16 and 17. So walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill or gratify the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Yes, and the spirit against the flesh. 
And these are contrary one to the other. So that you do not do the things that you wish. So sometimes, when we are thinking about guarding our hearts, some of the things that we want to do, they seem to be harmless. They may not be what one might call sins. So for instance, if you if you say I'm too too tired to pray. And every time, every day you're too tired to pray. But you, know, but you think, what, what is causing you to be too tired? And you walk through your day and you, and you think about how you spent time and how when you get to the time you should be praying, you're completely exhausted. One could say none of the things that you've done is sinful. But the, the result of those very many things is that you're not able to pray. Maybe you're not able to read the Bible. And yet we saw that to guard our hearts, we have to put the word of God in it. So we do not have time to put the word of God in it. So when the devil comes and knocks on your heart, there's nothing to scare him. There is no word. So it says the spirit and the flesh are against each other. And the flesh is going to bring things that are attractive. They are entertaining. But they are attractive. They are entertaining. They are entertaining. They are entertaining. They are entertaining. They keep us busy, but they ensure that we do not have time for the spirit. We are not guarding our hearts with all due diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one to look at a couple more verses. Um, Psalm 119, verse 12. I think let's have it in our Amplified. You know, there are some things that Jesus said that today we would say, oh no, this is shocking, this is impolite. But he yes, said, yes, I didn't to mm. and he said, you know, offspring of vipers. How can you speak good things when you're evil? The fullness of the, heart, the mouth speaks. This is a, a fairly common verse. Out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the good man from his inner good treasure and the evil man out of his inner evil storehouse flings forth and he says I tell you on the day of judgment men will have to give account for every idle word they speak and so here is some serious admonition that by your words you'll be justified by your words you'll be condemned and sentenced so if we have not if we put the word of God in our heart how we guard them when we speak, guess what comes out? We talk at church for a Yet, if we don't put the word of God in our hearts, nothing at one got a church. We don't do on it and meditate on it. We don't touch for me to deserve. We don't do it. We touch color. When we open our mouths, what's going to come out? Because our hearts are not going to be empty. We're going to be something. And we're going to have to choose what that something is going to be. It is not going to jump there by Because we have a mind. In our mind is where decisions are. We can determine, as Nehemiah did, we can decide to guard with all due diligence. So if we can guard things, we hire people to sleep outside the house and guard things. Who is it we cannot guard the well spring? Of our 
Because if we have the word in us, when we open our mouths, that's what's going to come out. It's going to bless people. It's going to encourage people. It's going to heal people. It's going to strengthen relationships. All these things are going to happen because we taken the word and hid it in our heart. Amen. Amen. When the Bible says that we shall be judged by our words, it is in a very real sense. It is not bigger It's the words that we speak that are going to determine our destiny. It is the words that we say that are going to determine whether we succeed or we don't. If we have not heed God's word in our hearts, when challenges come, we are not going to say the words that will make us overcome. So it is not just for others, but for ourselves that we now must we guard our hearts. And we saw that we guard by taking in the word. By doing the word. By doing the word. Let's look at a couple more verses. So let's go to Matthew 15. And we'll take it from verse 17. So, so this is Jesus talking about what defiles a man. And he says, do you not yet understand that whatsoever enters a mouth actually goes through the belly and comes out? Shall we go? But those things which proceed out of Na the mouth ye mukamwa, come forth from the heart motima, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, o, adulteries, and, and let's go. These are the things that defile a man. Bino bie bintu, ebi, ebi, ebi the rest of this verse, the Ministry of Health will be very unhappy with. <laughs> so, so we see again Jesus saying that the words that come out of our mouth, they are the real critical thing. They are the critical thing. They are the critical. Because they are a reflection of what is in our hearts. Florence said what she learned was that when she, when she when she received bad news, when she's confronted by something, she goes to God. Again, she probably falls on her knees and calls out to God. And she'll probably pray in the word that is already in her heart. God, you said. If you do not know anything about what God said about you, how are you going to advocate for yourself? Because it is in the words that we have allowed to sink in our hearts that will come out either to rebuke the devil, get behind me, Satan, or over. To indeed claim your promise and say, God has said, and so I boldly say. Let's put these words in our mouth. Let's put these words in our hearts so that when we open our mouths, out of the fullness of the words that come out will bless. They will cause us to be victorious. Amen? Amen. So when it says to guard your hearts, so it is indeed to say it is, it is going to make the difference between life and death. It's going to make the difference between failure and success. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. We are in a year of and what is going to make this a reality is we are going to guard our hearts with the word. we are going to do the word and God is going to stand by his word to if we do not have the word, we, we are going to wonder how is increase going to happen? How is multiplication possible? Because when you look on your WhatsApp, everything is terrible. Millions are stolen every day. There's nothing in the school, there's nothing in the hospitals. This sounds like terrible things. And believe me, they are terrible. But in God's economy, when there's increase, when there's multiplication, it is going to happen. Because the word is true. Amen? Amen. Out of our mouth, out of our mouths is where we are going to be victorious. Amen. Amen. And it is going to come about because we have taken his word, we have hid it in our hearts. We have meditated on it. We have said it to ourselves. We believe it. So when we speak, it, it is going to act. Amen. Amen. Guard our hearts with all due diligence. Because out of it come the issues of life. Amen. Amen. These, these sound like you know, you say, what has it to do with, we read about Nehemiah, this Old Testament, before Christ, 444 years before Christ was born. This is the amazing thing about scripture. You know, when you hear people doubting the Bible, these people didn't have the computer. <laughs> In fact, they didn't have the computer for millennia. How is it that you can find text in the Old Testament that is perfectly mirrored in the New Testament? It's the same God. The same yesterday, today, and forever. So if Nehemiah could win, and he was an Old Testament man, he was guarding a building. A building of brick. A man who was a builder. A building of brick. 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 A building you know, in the days of Nehemiah and Ezra, not everybody had the word. A scribe like Ezra could bring the word and read it. Once he was done, he took the scrolls and, and people had to just rely on their memories. Now we have the Bible in many versions. We have it in the phone. When we open the phone, where do we go in our phone? Friends, what is the commonest app on your phone? WhatsApp? Messenger. Messenger what, what do you get from there? Candles. TikTok. TikTok. Thankfully, at Sanji's word, we can get the gospel. <laughs> But this word has been here since creation. Amen. There was nothing that was created that was not created in him by him. him. And it is in us. And we are afraid to fail. That's the fact we haven't read the word. 
We are going to succeed because we have guarded our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I encourage you, read Nehemiah. There are many lessons, but I think if you remember nothing else from Nehemiah, remember to guard our hearts in all the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.